What's up, my fellow Vikings? This is Hamatu coming at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you 10 things, 10 steps you can take to improve your basic box Viking house. Are you tired of living in a basic box? Well, watch this video and I'm gonna show you 10 additions you can make to your house to turn it into something that you can be proud of. I'm gonna call it level one. This is the basic rectangle. This is something that most of you Vikings out there, most people when they start playing Valheim can probably put together once you become a little familiar with the building mechanics of the game. Figuring out the snap points, figuring out the roof tiles, um, the angled beams. It's just a basic rectangle with some window slits installed with some beams tossed in there. Nothing fancy. You might notice one feature instead of building flat on the ground, it's propped up on little one meter stands and that just adds some clearance. That's kind of like, let's call it the level zero tip of this video. Um, in order to uh, work with you know different level terrain, um, if the ground was uneven, you can prop it up on stands and then build your floorboard across that to guarantee a nice flat even floorboard. Inside we just got a little bit of furniture, but this video is not about the furniture, it's about what you can do to your house. Move on to level one. Add some shape. The only difference here between house one and house two is I added a little T-shape or an L-shape. So I added a completely separate section jutting out from this house. Um, simply using that I-frame wood beam, which I stands for inside, as opposed to the O-beam, which is outside, which can help cap out your roofs on the outside corners. But yep, this, this adds just a little bit of uh, an extra depth, layer of depth, some, some personality. You don't want it to just be a big flat box. And coming onto the inside, what did I do with this new section that I added onto the house? Turned it into a bedroom with some little bunk beds just for fun. Little enclosed sleeping area here, little enclosed area up here. Everybody has their own personal chest. Everybody's happy. Moving on. Level two, add window detail. So this is just gonna cover some basic, simple things that you can do to add a little bit of extra detail to those windows instead of them just being open slits. First thing I wanna show you is window sills. These are simple little one meter beams. You can add them on the inside or outside or both. Um, they work on either side and they help add a little bit of depth. You know, simply straight all the way across and then curve them inward a little bit at the end. Other very easy thing to do is just toss a door in the middle of that window. Um, that kind of looks like shutters, um, like a nice, like a real window with shutters. And it also doubles up, like you can close it. If there's a storm outside and you kind of want to feel a little bit more cozy inside, you can literally just go and close the doors. And that, that kind of adds to the, the overall coziness of the, uh, of the, of the, the window structure. Up here, have a simple little crisscross beam, nothing fancy, very easy. Moving around the back side, two more doors, and you see we play with the pattern here. This one's a little bit more interesting. Um, I'm gonna go on the inside to show it a little bit better because uh, the sunlight's working against us there. But before we get to the inside, let's take a look at our front face here. Added a little bit of a pattern here, and I'm using a fence here in this opening. I intentionally have half of this deleted so that I can show you how to build it and show what it looks like. Um, so you're gonna go to your fence. This, this is gonna be a tutorial video is in addition to a demonstration video for, for parts of it. So you're gonna go to your fence and you might notice that you're really struggling to get the second fence in here because the mouse cursor is bound to the front of the fence. You would really need your mouse cursor to be over here. So this is the kind of technique that you're gonna to have to use quite frequently while building as you advance your, your Belheim building skills. So I'm gonna to need to knock down this and knock down this to allow me to place my cursor along this board here. And then what I'm looking for is I'm looking to line up the tall poles right there. That looks good to me, nice and lined up. 
and then we can replace our beam, replace our wall, and we are patched. And now we've got a front entrance window with a little bit more character. We got the, the pattern right here with the space in between and the, the fences to, to offer like a kind of cool, unique looking opening. I particularly like when I talk about depth, look at the depth that you can see just looking through here. I can see through this window into the inside and I can even see the window on the back side of the building and the trees and the sunlight on the other side. That's the kind of depth I'm talking about. And the openness of windows really, really help um, bring, bring that to light. Last technique I wish to show you here, again, in the name of, of depth, is one thing you can do to add a little bit more depth, it's not significant, but all the little things kind of add up, is you can rotate your beams. Instead of just putting your beams on the wall flat, 90 degrees, you can do a little two rotation to it to, to make them pop out just a little bit more, um, which you can kind of see in effect right here. Now, you don't have to do that all the time. You don't have to do it ever. This is your world. You, you make it how you like, but it's a, a little tip and suggestion. I didn't do it here, for example. I didn't do it there either, but I did do it over here. Um, but I, I, I like the effect of it right here. That's a little tip. Add a little bit more depth to your windows to make them pop in the right circumstances. Moving on. Level three, overhang the roof. Now this is, it might be the top tip that I can offer. If you do anything to just make your basic box look a little bit better, it's add an overhang roof. But this is definitely in the top three of my tips. As you look around here, you can see the depth that this adds. And I'm gonna talk for a minute here. I love the lighting right here. What the overhang accomplishes is you see the shadow that it adds here? Now Valheim is a low polygon game, but somehow it manages to look absolutely gorgeous so often. And in my opinion, the biggest reason for that is the lighting. Like you can just see the sun shafts like kind of shining through the trees here, looking down on this house. When you add depth like this to your buildings, it helps create those shadows and the shadows showcase the depth that much more. And that really makes it look like a legitimate house and not just a barn or a box. Um, so the overhang roof is a huge thing you can do to help achieve that. And you can see the overhang all the way around here, all the way around. I built this overhang on this house all the way around, truly. And you can even see it on the backside here. Um, Again, it doesn't have as much effect on this side because this is not the sunlight facing side, but it, it, it's, yeah, the overhang is crucial. Now, boom, we're gonna move over and I'm gonna return to this house really quickly to show you bonus content of how to build the overhang. All right, bonus content, how to build overhang roofs. So I'm going to start by knocking out the roof pieces of my standard house um, where the roof met flush to the wall. And first step, one meter beam out. Now I'm going to make a note right here. If you don't even want to do the full overhang wrap around all the way around, you can just do a little overhang in the front. You can start with your spikes. The one thing I like to do personally, you don't have to, is add ladders. You can just add ladders, which adds a little bit of detail, adds, adds some layers to it. It's not like one flush surface. You can see the working of the shadows of the individual steps um, playing in there. And so you add the ladders, add four meter, uh, 45 degree beams, and there you go, now you kind of have a front overhang that's still flush with the wall. That is, if you do nothing else, you can toss this on the front of your structure and it immediately starts to look a little bit better. But I'm going to remove these, hopefully without deleting anything else in my house. 
not worry about that for a hot second. Return to this beam that I placed. One, one meter out, one meter out in the other direction. Now that's gonna create the overhang going this way. And in order to get the starting point for the roof, one meter down. That is going to become the starting point for your wraparound overhang roof. It's one meter removed in three different directions from your, your corner of your building. So then you can just add a couple bars across just to see, and that is where you can build your roof piece from. Right there, right there. So on and so forth. Snap, snap, snap. And now because we are one meter removed, we would now need to utilize the roof caps. Instead, actually I'm gonna knock that out. And that would become the beginnings of the overhang roof. Knock that out, knock that out, and then same, same deal pop up your board, and because we utilize a roof cap, it's probably easiest just to cap it off with an X like that, and that is, that is how to do it. Coming around to level four, add depth and layers inside. Again, those two keywords, depth and layers, but this time this is purely an interior tip walk inside and I'll show you what I mean. Here we go. Here is the interior and you'll notice that I added a middle layer living room in here that is um, one staircase drop down from the base of the house. So instead of putting your entire one-story house on one plane, this is still a one-story house but you create natural definition to define the rooms by just adding a, a vertical layer, a staircase up or a staircase down accomplishes that. And, and I just kind of added little, little borders with the X's. They don't have to be X's. They can be just the right regular um, one meter uh, walls. They can just be one meter beams like fence style, um, whatever you want. But you'll notice I'm not going floor to ceiling walls and it's not like I'm walking through a door into a completely separate room. Um, it's still very open and you feel like you have a lot of space in here and you can see across the holding, you can look out all the windows from all the sides and yet the rooms are still very defined and that's be partially because or mostly because of the extra layer depth that I added inside here. All right, sprinting around to level five, roof dormers. What is a dormer, you might ask? Well, my friend, you're looking at it up there. It's this bad boy right here. Now, this particular dormer is what is called, I believe, a gable-fronted dormer. Some architects watching this, they're gonna be like, no, 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 that's completely wrong. Um, but yeah, I believe this is a gable-fronted dormer. A dormer is essentially a window that juts out of a roof and you can build your windows down here out of your walls You can build windows out of your roof and that too adds a lot of personality I dare say even more personality to your house back to that depth back to that layers now This is a kind of complex gable fronted. I wanted to kind of show you different things that you can do um, as a demonstration but the principle of the gable fronted in Valheim is you're just going to use your iframe and you're gonna pop it out. Actually, I will demonstrate. I can just make a, make a little hole right here. Why not? Let's just do it on the fly. There you go. And this is, I just use a, a, a four meter, you know, footprint area right there. And then like, this is the, the most simplistic version of a gable fronted dormer you can make. Cap it with a couple beams, and there you go. Got your little window slit. Cap it on the top too to really make it finalized. And that would be an example of how, that's how easy it is to just like add a little window pop out of your roof. Looks great. This one's a little bit more complex. I essentially did the same thing here because it's two meters longer. I needed to add a roof cap. Um, capped it there, and then I added the ladders 
which is a feature we talked about earlier in the front, and then cap that with beams as well, and then added beams around the bottom. And then I suspect that because um, after adding this beam, there's probably a little bit of a gap between the roof and the bottom. So I added an additional beam going across on the bottom to just kind of complete it. You can do it to your, your, your heart's personal um, preference, whether you want to keep it simple or add a little bit more to it. You can add the spikes, don't have to add the spikes. I'm just showing you some options. Speaking of options, we've got different kinds of dormers. These over here, these little cuties are called shed dormers. Or, I'm sorry, this is not a shed dormer. I do not have a shed dormer on this house. Maybe I can uh, do a little bonus content build for a shed dormer later. These are wall dormers named for basically their walls jutting out of the roof and then you cap them with the roof going in the opposite direction. Um, same little deal, added little window cells, just kind of lined them with wood on both sides. Now I showed you both options here. We talked about this earlier, um, flat face laminated um, beams or you curve them. See which one looks a little bit better to you. It's your preference, your world. Moving on, this one's not so much a dormer, but it's a skylight. Now this is something I've kind of, it's so simple and I've been obsessed with it to the extent that I've been using it in just about every build somewhere, including a swamp's build, <laughs> which is probably not recommended. But um, uh, I just love sky the idea of a skylight in Valheim. And I'm gonna show you a little bit more from the inside. It is essentially just ladders with um, four meter beams lined in, but look how this looks from the inside. Um, what Viking would not want to sleep under the stars, cozied up under a little skylight where you can see the stars, you can see the trees, uh, looks really nice. One quick note, I must make, there's a little asterisk to this, obviously you'll see right now, I do have the sheltered buff um, it's a little finicky. There are slight areas underneath where you might lose the shelter buff. There you go, I just lost it and then I regained it again. So it's not perfect. And that also means water will come through slightly on the in-between spots. Um, so it's a compromise. If you think the aesthetic is worth it, then go for it. I certainly do. All right, moving on. Level six, behold the chimney. Now I added two chimneys to this house because why not? You can add as many chimneys as makes sense for your house. What are you trying to build? Where do you need a chimney? Put the chimney there. But yeah, the chimneys add a ton of depth. You can see it popping out. It adds this definition around the outside here. For this one, and we'll look at it a little bit more clearly on the inside, I opted to go with the wooden squares um, which is something I rarely build with, but I did it in this case as a tide rolls in here, specifically because with this house, I'm showcasing the, the complexity. I was trying to make the most complex house I could possibly make out of just wood, just meadows material. And so I wanted to try to utilize every single wooden piece available to me. So I, I made a conscious effort to um, use the square X's and I thought I decided to go for it with a chimney and I thought it turned out pretty cool. It's really cool to see the smoke lit up on the inside, uh, slowly flowing up. Typically you can't see the smoke in your chimneys. So I really like that effect here. Um, we'll see it better from the other side. And on this side, did a completely different chimney. Again, we're only working with wood. Typically you would build your chimney out of stone um, stone chimneys look amazing in this game. This is a extraordinarily high tide. Um, but anyway, yeah, so we're just working with wood here. So I wanted to do a, 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 two different kinds of chimneys. And with this one, it's just literally the, the wall beams going all the way up. Now you'll notice I used the detailed side of the wall beams rather than the flat face side of the wall beams. Typically when you build outside, the general consensus is the, the smooth side facing outward looks best, just like these walls over here. But for this chimney, I was trying to add like a little bit of detail. I wanted to give it a little bit of personality. So I wanted to see how that went, that looked. And that's my tip here is experiment. I actually think that turned out pretty well. And then on top of that, 
I have said, what the heck? Let's try some banners. Like, add a happy little banner there, a happy little banner there. And I I honestly thought it would look pretty pretty crappy, but I was pleased with it. I, I like, again, we're dealing with all wood here, so there's no color contrast. Having a little bit of color there, I think really, really helped you know make this pop out. Quick short note, this chimney right here, this profile shot was my inspiration for this full house, this final build when I set out to make this. I think I saw a church in real life that I thought looked really pretty. Um, just the architecture of it was really, really cool. And it was at this angle and I thought, hey, I wanna build this in Valheim, like the little tower in the middle and then the steepled roof leading up to it and like approaching it halfway up or a little bit more than halfway up. So yeah, I started with this and then kind of built the house from there. Coming inside to view the chimneys to see what they these chimneys turn into on the inside. Um, this is our family room chimney, nice and big, nice and tall, lots of room. And you can see, you know, this is that old window that we transformed uh, to become a chimney fireplace. One quick note about smoke in Valheim. Smoke can, smoke actually needs a fairly large square to, to fit through. There's another video online that does a very good job. Maybe I'll link it in my video of uh, explaining the mechanics of smoke in Valheim, but you can rest assured that smoke cannot escape these cracks. That's why you see the smoke very steadily flowing all the way up to exit the chimney at the top. It can't escape any of these openings. They're too small. And our second little chimney creates a cozy little sleeping nook here for the Vikings to sleep and get a good, get a good night's sleep because you want that if you're a Viking in this brutal world. Um, so th that was the other thing that necessitated this chimney here was we needed uh, a place for the, the Vikings to, uh, a fire needed to be nearby the bed. So it made sense to build this um, cozy little chimney there. And there's, see, two, two chimneys, two very different personalities with these chimneys, but so you can add some variety. Moving on to level seven, bay windows. Now, there are different style windows you can make. I'm doing this piece on bay windows. I think bay windows generally refer to, again, architecture is gonna kill me. Um, because I'm probably wrong about this, but I believe bay windows generally refer to windows that pop out uh, of the building. Um, and all I did here to achieve this bay window is um, started with the floorboard. I think it was about eight meters apart or six meters apart. And you just do two twists, one, two, angle it out. And then add another part over here, two twists, one, two, attach it and then you attach the piece here you attach the piece there and then you can build your floor off of it you can build your walls up from there and then you build your columns and then you do the same exact thing with the roof and it's valheim so all the building pieces snap together really nicely and then you have this nice little effect talking about adding depth look at this layers here layers up there and we got our our shutters still right here and we got our chimney right there lots of depth now you see the shadows bouncing off of things with the lighting um, looks really great. Swing around the other side. I just did the same exact thing there. Not going to spend any additional time showcasing that. One real quick thing you'll see, you'll you'll see here. Um, I I think there's a gap between here and the roof, and I chose to just kind of manually fill that in using these wooden beams. I think I could have achieved the same effect with the the floorboards instead, uh, but I went with these wooden beams. And then I just want to show you what that what this looks like from the inside real quick because it really does add a lot in that it it opens up the space significantly. So previously our wall would have been right here and that does not leave much space to work with. Um, so now you can see we have a lot of additional space by just adding these bay windows, enough to add a table. And then look at what that looks like looking out. So nice. Again, the light is just kind of seeping through. Um, looks really pretty and yeah gorgeous views adds a lot to the space moving on level eight add an extension so now we have like a full house with lots of features but we can still add more 
with an outdoor extension like this. I, the main thing I wish to point out, or the several things I wish to point out, the first thing I wanna point out is the contrast in the roof angles. My roof is built with 45 degree angles, so you make your extension with a 26 degree angle and it just kind of creates this nice little profile shot that looks pleasing geometrically to look at. Second thing I wish to point out, again, I'm trying to utilize every wooden piece available to me, so I figured I, I do my little technique with the ladders. Why the heck not try using the staircases? Um, this is an outdoor space, so it doesn't need to be 100% roofed. It's, it's, I, I decided to make this into like a little workshop. Um, and I got back here, little, little table desk with some chests and I kind of, I manually placed these, um, so that they fit flush in the middle and they pop out on both sides like this, rather than just be, um, on one side of the beam. And that allows the the chest to be accessed from both sides i thought that was nice and functional but to me i i mean i always like to think about this is a little bonus tip think about what you want your space to be so for me i, I wanted a, i wanted a workshop somewhere in this build and i wanted it to be outdoors so then i kind of just created this extension to to, to make that and i didn't need my workshop to be enclosed in a roof i kind of I, if i'm out here working all day and building stuff with my wood I like to be able to see the trees and the scenery. And you know what, if it's a rainy day, then so be it. I'll just go inside and read a book instead. But yeah, adding an extension. You can just add, you can add an extension to any side of your house um, to just, again, give your house some more shape, more depth, an additional layer. And you keep doing that and your house just transforms into something wonderful. Level nine, add a prominent front entrance. Now, before I even get into this, I want to emphasize that none of these steps need to be taken in this order. Um, any of them can all honestly be done in any order. This could have been the very first one that I showed you. Honestly, kind of wish I did show it first, but here we are, level nine. You can see my remodeled front entrance to this and I will point out the features of this as well, but really quickly, just show you comparison. Previously, I was just working with four steps leading directly up to the, the surface of the front door. Now, first thing I did was I added a tiny little two meter by four meter porch patio in front of the building, and then I built my steps to that instead. From there, I created, if we shut our doors for a moment, banisters for this section and i created a second separate overhang just just to kind of add some variety i don't think i've ever done anything like this before but you know it's just you just experiment and see and the main thing i wanted to do here was add that roof shape contrast if our main roof was working with 45 degree beams i i lay i wanted to layer the 26 degree beams in front of it to create this profile pick where the contrast and angles looks kind of pleasing from a geometry standpoint. Um, after doing that, there was a gap between the end of the main roof and this new roof I made. So I did my ladder technique to extend this roof out a little bit further. I added the spikes on the front and I added our little dragon statue guy. Um, now you can see that this, this roof, this whole house is built to the max capabilities of wood. Um, it's the max heights. I think I've stretched it all out to the max. I don't use iron. I don't use core wood at all. So this is like a true meadows house built from the ground up using only wood. Um, additional features of this entrance, something that you can do and think about, um, is I angled the banisters outward instead of just flat down. Um, that kind of creates, an, that, it, it looks like arms opening up to invite you into the house. So you're able to approach the house from either side and get around the corner pretty easily rather than having to jump over. One additional thing, bonus tip time again, um, to think about when you're, at, when you're building your space is you don't want to build walls and fences and stuff and then find yourself hopping over them to get to where you want to go. Like, oh, I need to get to this workshop and I need to get in here, so I'm gonna hop over and get inside. You kinda wanna make it easy enough 
uh, to navigate across your natural walking path to get to where you're going. Um, so you don't want to build impediments. So angling this outward is part of making uh, the whole front entrance and your access inside and outside a little bit more accessible. Um, yeah, the only the last thing to mention or two things to mention added a little shade. I just thought that kind of looked nice, little little sun sun curtains. And I did, I think too, probably the best effect in this entire build, uh, that tip where I rotate the beams so that they're a little pointed. I think this looks really nice here. Um, it doesn't necessarily look as fantastic in other parts of this build, but I was just doing it for demo purposes. But here's a good example of where the rotated columns do look really nice and pointed. I think maybe that's partially in contrast to this banister, which turns and then gets rotated this way. Anyway, yeah, add your Viking house needs a prominent front entrance. So play around with it, add some banisters and stairs, add an additional rope, make it pop out. And finally, we have arrived to the final step, level 10, step 10, add some landscaping, add some outdoor structures to your camp to make the space come to life. This is a little bit less about the house itself, but more about the space around the house that helps accent the house. And let's just go through just little things that I added really, really quickly here. This is our full camp. We got a dock. You're gonna have a dock. We have rafts. So, you know, just build, build your dock out. I didn't build a straight dock. I built an L-shaped dock. Again, add a little bit of shape. Um, ladders, in case you fall in the water, we've all been there, you can't get back on, build your ladder so that you can get out. Coming over to here, add a little outdoor camp. And uh, I'm not going to go through everything here, you can see all the pieces that are part of it, a little honeycomb structure. Um, I love to add, I love the crafting pieces. Um, in this case, like I think the tanning racks they serve as good little bookends that, that, that kind of define this as its own secluded space. This is the, the key thing that I like to keep in mind with my landscaping. The key tip here is to kind of, you wanna define the space. You want to create little boundaries and borders that make it clear that this is this space and then this is the end. Like right here, this is the camp space. Here's our little garden and then it's over. Like this is just the field. Like there's no walking path here. You're not gonna be going out there and it feels complete. It feels finite. Um, and that's just something to keep in mind as like a general building tip. Um, I'm gonna change our time of day a little bit to point like six toward the evening. I think that, was, that should give us some nice lighting overlook in the house here. All right, moving on to the garden. So this is the landscaping tip. Um, quick asterisks to this whole section. I utilize, and it's one of my favorite mods, super simple, it's called Plant Everything. It, it just adds additional planting components to the, the cultivator. And these aren't, these aren't custom pieces, they're pieces that already exist in the game. It just allows you to plant them. Like you'll see these bushes all over the forest it just allows you to plant them using two wood. Um, these are the bushes from the plains, for example, bushes that you find in the black forest, um, stuff like your raspberry bushes. You use five, consume five raspberries, plant it. Um, so I highly recommend that mod for anybody. It's very non-intrusive, um, but if you don't like mods, you can still accomplish some landscaping, no problem. And it starts with the garden. It starts with taking your one meter beams and doing gentle one turn rotations all the way around to create a nice little um, enclosed garden space. Take your cultivator, cultivate the ground inside it. And then you can plant things like your carrots and your turnips and your onions um, and all the stuff that's pick plantable by default. Um, the, the plant everything mod just allows you to plant stuff like this, the mushrooms, the dandelions, regular bushes. Yeah, um, black forest bushes. Um, coming around the back, coming around the back. And this is my favorite part, the vines. Vines also exist in this game. They're also plantable through the plant everything mod. And it just kind of makes the whole house 
feel more alive, more organic, more natural. It's a part of the environment. Um, and that's, that's what landscaping does. And on this side, you'll notice I just added a little bit of item stands to show kind of the decoration you can do at add, add your shields to your workshop. Um, just planted some little um, fir trees to create a little linescape here. Again, just defining the space. I didn't want it right up against the workshop because I wanted to be able to walk by here. I wanted to be able to view this from the outside. Um, grab, grab these chests from out here as needed. Um, the bushes here kind of close it off. A little birch tree, a little um, pine trees in the back. And there you have it. Zooming out a little bit, we got our full camp. Level 10 landscaping, everything involved. Well, guys, I really hope you um, uh, enjoyed this video. I hope you, I hope it was informative. I hope uh, it was helpful. Um, I had a lot of fun making this, a lot of fun going through these steps. It kind of it helped me kind of crystallize the little things that I can do to help build my houses. I'll just do a nice slow jaunt back in time um, as we as we do the outro to this video to see how the house devolves, loses one feature at a time. But yeah, these are all the steps you can take. It really, it started with one basic rectangle, and I just added one thing at a time, one thing at a time. And it slowly, you can see how adding these little things can transform a house. Again, using just basic wood. I mean, this can become so much more masterful if you're using all the materials involved in the game. Stone just transforms everything you can do. Iron. The scope of iron just makes, you know, you can build your buildings to new heights, literally. Um, and here we are back at the beginning, our little L shape and our basic box. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, yeah, we'll see you guys next time.